It's my aunt's birthday this week, so I'm taking her out to dinner. But first, we stopped by this newly opened florist shop in the Richmond neighborhood called Paul Robertson to pick up a custom bouquet that Chesley ordered for my aunt. This place is a total gem. They do the most amazing floral arrangements. Even the ready-made bouquets out front are stunning. And if you don't want a pre-made one, you can actually pick and choose your own flowers from these different bundles all around the store. They sell a wide variety of flowers that are in season, so you kind of never see the same flowers. Um, they switch them out pretty frequently, and there are a ton that I've never even heard of before. I also saw this ginormous pink princess philodendron. Just look at that variegation. I didn't see a price tag, but this beauty must be at least $300. We picked up the bouquet and just look at it! We had asked for the most bold colored peonies they had paired with other bold florals. We didn't want anything that was pastel or beige. We wanted a proper spring arrangement that was full of eye popping colors and the florists did not disappoint. They are so talented, shout out to them. And honestly, I'm kind of jealous of my aunt. I would love a bouquet like this. This arrangement came with six peonies in full bloom with some ranunculus and some other florals that I'm not sure the name of, but they look great together. Okay, now on to dinner. We made reservations at Foreign Cinema a month in advance because it's pretty hard to get weekend a weekend time slot if you don't plan ahead. So Foreign Cinema is a fine dining spot in the Mission that's been around for about 24 years. They have a very relaxed atmosphere and chill vibes, so you don't have to dress super fancy to eat here, but the food and service is definitely top notch. Foreign Cinema is so called because of the restaurant's cinematic theme, which is a nod to drive in movie theaters. They project a lot of classic movies on the patio wall outside in the main dining area. Sadly, because it's summer right now and the sun sets super late, we weren't able to catch a showing. The menu is pretty straightforward and tend to feature the same items, but usually with a seasonal twist. We ordered a couple of small plates to share and some entrees as well. My aunt and uncle don't really eat raw oysters though, so we pass on those, but I hear they're really good here. Our drinks came out first, and I ordered my aunt a cocktail called Unbreakable. It's made of plantation five-year rum, liquid alchemist passion fruit essence, cranberry and lemon juice, yuzu liqueur, and it's topped with some mint. Cocktail descriptions are always so funny to me because I don't recognize half of the ingredients, but our waiter told me that this was one of their sweeter signatures, so I got that for her. And her response was a typical older generation Asian response. Unimpressed. <laughs> Uh, I got my uncle some beer and he similarly had no comment, which meant it was great. <laughs> the first thing that came out was the brondad, which is whipped salt cod, potatoes, garlic, and green chilies served with house pickles and baguette toast. It was delicious and creamy with a crunchy baked top layer, and I'd give this a 7 out of 10. But my gripe is that it came with only four little toasts. Like, come on, that toast to dip ratio is totally off. Then came the Pacific tuna poke served with taro chips. And again, they were so stingy with the taro chips. They give us like three when we're four people. So I asked for more chips and they did end up giving me a couple more chips. So I give this a seven out of 10. The tuna is really fresh. And then we have the house charcuterie board that includes duck rillette, pate maison, faux gras, guava marmalade and gray mustard served with grilled bread. It's a really pretty plate and it tasted yummy too. And I don't know the best way to eat this so I just like to pile a little bit of everything on top and I'd give this an 8 out of 10. It's great for sharing with a table and it is really tasty. The last appetizer that came out was the house made mozzarella burrata with sugar snap peas Albion strawberries, basil pisto, toasted pistachios, and shaved croutons. Honestly, it was all right. It ended up being more of a snap peas dish than a burrata, so I felt a little bit deceived. I'd probably give this a 6 out of 10.
With our small plates done and out of the way, our entrees came. We ordered two of the grilled 14-ounce dry-aged Akaushi ribeye, which is served with mushroom and gruyere panade, Meyer lemon salsa verde, grilled rob, and cabernet jus. I shared one of these with Chesley, and honestly, it was too much food since we ordered so many small plates in the beginning. You can definitely share this with someone. We asked for medium rare, but this came out a little too rare. I'm going to be honest, it was kind of a letdown. For $70, I expected the meat to be more tender, but it was pretty chewy, and I was just surprised by how flavorless it was. The best thing about this dish was honestly the Gruyere panade, which is literally just fancy stuffing. It's a bread casserole, and it's freaking delicious. I would give this a 10 out of 10 by itself, but overall, it was a 3 out of 10. I would not order this again. My aunt doesn't eat beef, so I ordered her the grilled lavender brine pork chop that comes with polenta, chard, balsamic cherries, caramelized cipollini, onions, and per perco percorino salsa. This was incredible. Probably the best pork chop I've ever had in my life because she gave me a bit to try. The meat was cooked to perfection. It was so tender and juicy and flavorful, not dry at all, and it was so well seasoned. This was a phenomenal 10 out of 10. Standing ovation. I definitely know what I'm ordering next time. We were really just way too stuffed to order dessert, but the staff were so kind and brought out a yuzu sorbet with a little candle on it so my aunt could make a wish and blow it out for her birthday. Okay. They, they, uh, <laughs> and that's a wrap. Overall, we had a wonderful dinner here. It's my second time at Foreign Cinema and it can be so magical and romantic as a date spot when it gets dark. And the food here is generally fantastic. I recommend checking this place out, and if you do, please let me know what you think.